trails Cause I'm not nuts, not for your guts, guts, guts girl I'm not nuts, not for your guts, guts, guts I don't know what, what, what I do If I couldn't cut, cut, cut heels to you Hello, no, no, it's, uh, hey, we're back. We're, I know, that's your thing. Okay. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. High five. Yeah. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> and <laughs> we've made it. We're back in the building. You said, um, that. You said that already. It's all right. We said it again. <laughs> we said it again. And we're back. We're uh, back. <laughs> Go ahead, Jed. Tell the people whatever you want right. to tell them. We're podcast territory. And now. we're back. <laughs> 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 so, guys, if you're on Patreon, you could be listening or watching this episode two days early. That's crazy. That's early. You also could have voted and either ensured or made sure the happening was not the point of today's discussion. But regardless, the happening won. Jed watched the happening. I did. Jed watched the happening. Me and Jed are discussing it. And mm -hmm. if you want to put your options and your options in, if you want to put your options into the equation, if you want to like hop in and like do a little thing with us, then go over to patreon.com slash horse soup and put your options in, vote in the polls, decide which tier is right for you on Patreon. Every tier grants you access to the polls and you can decide one of the movies that we're covering each month. Jed, welcome Jed. Thanks, thanks Caleb. Great to be here, everyone. I just got back talk, from- Talk a little lower, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay let's go it's, it's i'm nervous i thought i felt i felt okay <laughs> <laughs> thanks caleb nice to be back nice to be be here with you and with with everyone else um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talking about the happening. All right. Now, is it just me or what's happening? <laughs> A lot's happening, Jed. What do you think is happening today? <laughs> All right, Caleb. I'll tell you what's happening and what I think is what's happening. So, what what's going on here? Man, I don't know. What's happening, Jed? I don't know. I'm, gl I'm glad you you're really, happening. Do you really want to hear it? Do you really want to hear? What yeah, I'm let me know what's happening. Here, you got a little, got a little. Oh, there yeah. we go. Thank you. Then you got a little, and then a little. Uh, okay, okay. Is it really that bad? Are you fucking with me? <laughs> no, there was something, but I got it. Poor I might have over exaggerated the way that I did it, but I actually I didn't get it. So there. <laughs> as long as you like doing it. I do. Yeah, I don't I do. make you do anything you don't like doing. For anyone that that's on the audio, I'm touching Jed's face. Yeah, I had some stuff in my face. On Jed's my brother. Mm. Mm -hmm. Welcome yes. to Horse Soup. You've never been here before. You've been on Donkey Fellatio, mm -hmm. the show that has to do with uh, we told some stories. You talked about the color blue. Blue. You mm. said it. Yes, you said it was a color that you really liked. I like blue. I like food that's gray. Yeah. Like gray chicken? Mm-hmm. Like gray macaroni. Uh, okay, yeah. It lets me know. Do not put cheese on your macaroni? No surprises. Do you put cheese on your macaroni? Mm-hmm. Or do you just eat the shells? I put cheese. Okay. I put cheese. I like cheesy how did, macaroni. How does it become gray? Um... I'm not a chef. Okay, so you don't make your you get macaroni given to you. I I buy my gray roni at the store. Okay. <laughs> I find it that way. We're talking about the happening from 2008. Hey, Caleb's my brother. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his brother. He's my brother. We are here <laughs> today. Tell me about tell me about what's happening. So what's happening is a movie starring <laughs> Mark Wahlberg, Zoe Des Channel. <laughs> Dirk. I should just say her name right. People are gonna get pissed. Zoe De Chanel. Mm -hmm. I'll say it right. I won't piss you guys off. I know you guys really like Five Hundred Days of Summer. I like Five Hundred Days of Summer. You showed me Five Hundred Days of Summer. She's French. Is she? She like French Canadian? That's how you pronounce it. Is like De De Chanel. What? De Oi. Zoe de Chanel. She might be French. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't. Yeah, I, yeah, I think she's good, American. That's a good movie though. The Five Hundred Days of Summer. You know, really like. You know. I like it. It's it's not like. 
it it works for like an angsty teenager. But, yeah, for but sure. it also works for the angsty adult. The angsty adult, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all in the same hand. Yeah. Like I understand that. Or I guess feeling. you could swap hands. You can swap hands. You don't have to use the same hand. I never use the hand I don't use. Yeah, I, <clears throat> buddy, I'm right there with you. Zoe Deschanel. Kristen Connolly from Cabin in the Woods. I don't even know if she had a big role in this. Was she one of the chicks in the beginning? I don't really know. Uh, um, Betty Buckley, who's in a movie called Split. Isn't that... That's a movie people like. I don't... I, mean, I never watched it. I'm going to be completely honest. I know she's in it. Is that the one about the fucking alien? Or the alien that was, like, in a lab and, like, had sex with the guy that... Was... I think so, yeah. Yeah. That sounds like that. And then they had, like... The, the... alien was, like, low-key kind of hot. And it wasn't one of the sequels, like, Limitless or something like that? <laughs> Not the one with Bradley oh, Cooper? Oh, and then it turned, in, similar? it turned into, like... This big monster like thing, like a like it hermaphrodited or something. It's really weird. <laughs> but hey, this makes the party a little more cray cray. Yeah, I don't I don't know much about Split, but things probably got split. And then Abigail Breslin's brother is in this. His name is Spencer Breslin. He gets shotgunned in the face. So I guess M Night kind of has this thing where he likes the Breslins. He likes um uh putting actors that shouldn't be in movies in movies like Mark Wahlberg. I don't know if he was human in this. I like pudding too. Pudding? In my pudding. mouth. Like eating it? I like pudding Mark Wahlberg. If you, the entire time watching it, I was thinking of like Mark Wahlberg as Dirk Diggler from <laughs> the uh, Disco Nights or whatever the fuck it's called. You I did gotta, say that a few times and I'm not too familiar with Dirk at, Diggler. I was thinking of like... um. Um, 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 that one Dude, Rob Schneider movie. It's, you know, uh, Boogie, Boogie Nights. Oh, not, not the Boogalow movie? Isn't there like it's a- It's called, it's- Deuce Bigelow? It's Boogie Nights. It's, Deuce Bigelow. No, bitch, Boogie Nights. What but, I just but said. But like, Rob Schneider's a gigolo in that movie. Rob Schneider? Mark, Mark Wahlberg is a porn star in Boogie Nights. Oh, okay, so it's pretty similar. They show, they they show his dick and everything. It's like a big old dick. Willem Dafoe has a pretty big dick, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good movie. It's really weird. But the entire time I thought like Mark Wahlberg was going to like get down and dirty with Dish and I. Oh, in, in this, in the happening. Yeah, they never did. I just wanted him. I mean, mix it up. Mix it up. Change you know? things up a little bit. Boogie happening. Like Boogie like, happening. Like the hap of boogie combined the two. Put whatever. them together. Yeah, lame okay. idea. Okay, whatever, I don't care. Okay, I like it. Well, it was written and directed by <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan, if you didn't catch the drift. It has a $60 million budget. Don't know where it went. Not a lot happened in this movie. It made $163 million at the box office, but it was also very not critically acclaimed. 18% by critics on Rotten Tomatoes, 24% by the audience, and a 5 out of 10 on IMDb. People didn't like this. Did you like this movie? Um, I like the idea. I do. Um, I think it was very Hollywood and I could kind of tell, I mean, there were times where it just really felt like they were acting and it didn't really feel real. You know, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I would mean, argue like, that was like, uh, Mark Wahlberg doesn't really seem like a person in this. Yeah. He seems like Mark Wahlberg acting as a person in a movie. Kind of. Yeah. And it's weird uh, that like M. Night Shyamalan kind of really gets actors to do play that kind of role because me and my buddy james we just watched signs recently did you ever see signs mm -hmm. the aliens in the cornfields yeah and, and mel gibson all that shit in the water they're like oh, yeah the the water the water yeah the, intolerant that's, that's the whole aliens, thing the yeah. aliens that don't like water they're mm -hmm. like i don't like <laughs> misters <laughs> could you imagine like that it's be it's not gatorade <laughs> you know when you're walking through like maybe like a show or like some kind of event or something that's kind of hot outside they have misters and you walk by imagine being those aliens you just can't walk through the mister yeah you just die you know they're in there they just <laughs> This is a bunch of misters. It's so fucking stupid. They have like the boss, the boss alien come through. Like, whoa, go get him. But, <laughs> they have misters. But like in that movie, Mel Gibson does not play a human. Like he plays the weirdest fucking character in the world. And I feel like the same thing happened in this with Mark Wahlberg. He kind of like, remember his role in Ted? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's it's similar. the same, right? It's like a similar vibe to it. Yeah, like a... 
Like, he's just being goofy, but, like, it seems like he's aware, but also it seems like they're trying to make this movie serious, but at, like, every other turn, you get thrown off, and you're like, this isn't serious. This can't be, right? Yeah. Yeah, th there was that. Well, like, it we... had me for a second, like, kind of caught in the character, but then, ps like, some shit would just happen, and it was like, oh, he's... Yeah, it's kind of... It was in... I mean... Not that great. It's but. good, but you know what? I do want to play this one clip before we get into anything, really, because it kind of symbolizes what this movie's about. This is Mark Wahlberg, um, like, moaning and stuff. What? Elliot, I know you want to stay, but we have to go. So... <laughs> the pause? You know, when we cast Mark and then cast Zoe, I was like, I think we have the two... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like he pauses for so Let long. Me think about that. Let Dude, me stop breathing and think about. It. And how come his breathing is louder than her dialogue? Like, how did they even get that scene? Because I, I don't think it was like that. It, they had to have cut his moaning down a little bit, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, they probably messed with the audio. You know, they, they did some editing and. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> it just sounds fucking ridiculous. Like, how can you be, how can you be like serious, like in your head, seriously think you're shooting a movie and then you have someone just sitting there going, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, this isn't a real movie. <laughs> right. It is kind of strange. And dude, they spent $60 million on this. Mm. 60 million. Could you imagine how many other things $60 million could have gone to other than Mark Wahlberg breathing excessively into a boom mic? It could have been a better movie, for sure. Yeah, like it could have been like a way first, movie. like if you do a list of like one, twos, and threes, one, it could have been a better movie. Well, the Two. idea, <laughs> the idea is really good. You know, like it okay. depends on how you look at the idea, though, right? Because if it's like random things are happening, it's plaguing people, it's killing people, that's pretty cool. But then if you go down and you're like, trees are well, making some wind. And it's, it's the wind, into man. People. Yeah, the it, wind was funny. It's like every time the trees would ru ruffle. Oh my ruffle, god, we're gonna yeah. kill ourselves. Oh, there it is. It's like in signs, <clears throat> yeah. aliens are like, oh my god, water. And then in this, it's like, oh my god, the wind. Mm -hmm. Like M. Night Shyamalan likes really simple things that shouldn't plague you to plague you. What? M. Night Shyamalan likes it when things that shouldn't be attacking you start attacking you. How often uh, are you worried about walking around in the air, like, becoming open toxic air. and attacking you? How yeah. how often are you worried about, like, like a an, mister misting An enemy you? you can't see, but you could only explain with the wind. With trees. The wind. Yeah, and the trees, bees. The grass blowing. <laughs> the, gla the grass blades. There were some scenes where it looked like they had a helicopter or they had something, like, just blowing really hard on the wind. They had to, right? Or maybe just a... They had a blow machine. <laughs> a blow machine. <laughs> they had to have a blow machine to create all that wind on demand. <laughs> so, basically, I think, we got, I think we gave you guys the structure of this movie. It's about... Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel walking around being very confused about wind being toxic and attacking people and making them do things they don't want to do. And closing every window. Remember the, the closing one? windows, closing car windows, house remember, windows. Remember that when they're driving in the Jeep and they're like, close the windows, close the windows, <laughs> airtight everything. And the and dude looks, looks up, and there's a little cut <laughs> a in the thing. Split. But could you imagine like, thinking that your that your Jeep with a cloth top is airtight to begin with? Have you ever been in a Jeep with a cloth top, like on I the mean, freeway? You could hear every single yeah. bit of the freeway it's, in your car. You know, it's like it's just like an act of desperation. You know, it's an act of desperation. It's just like you're really hoping that this thing isn't gonna come for you. <laughs> you're doing whatever you can to stop the air, but wait. Uh, there's a cut in the roof. It's when you look in the sky and you're like, mm. there's hope. There's no hope. <laughs> there's no hope. There's no hope for me in this slit Jeep. <laughs> yeah. You want to you wanna know a math question? Like, like, <laughs> I've studied calculus. Yeah. Why is every smart person in this movie just a fucking science or math teacher? 
I'm a the, teacher. The hey, whole t- Mark, damn, he, Mark dude. Wahlberg said that. Dude. He's like, I'm a teacher. The only reason I'm sad, uh, <laughs> I guess not the only reason I love when James is around, but James was initially going to do this episode with me, but he kind of has a sore throat right now. We did the last Shyamalan movie together, but my brother mm-hmm. watched the movie with me while I was doing notes. So I was like, well, James can't come through. Let's just cover this right now. Mm-hmm. Um, when we did the last M. Night Shyamalan movie, <laughs> Or not? The, oh wait, no, not the last Shyamalan movie. We did the last Shyamalan movie together. Signs. There's a lot of exposition, but whatever. But we, the last movie we did together was called Hobo with a Shotgun. And Rooker Howard is running around, and he's talking to this chick and calling her a teacher, even though she's not. Like she's a sex worker. But in his mind, he's like, "I want you to be a teacher." So he's just like, I don't know, this weird fucking homeless guy. It's like you're a teacher, and <laughs> I just really feel like Mark Wahlberg would have been Rooker Howard's best friend in that movie because it would have been like. Uh, he's just running around like I'm a teacher, and then oh, boy, the shotgun Rudger yes, Howard just running around like along really well. Yeah, he's like you're he's like, a teacher. I am a teacher. Well, we're all in agreement. We're here. all teachers. <laughs> we're all happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> we could all teach. No argument here. <laughs> Society, <laughs> how to live? <laughs> yeah, he gets to live. Like everything just everything just ends up being okay because he's a science teacher. You're a teacher, I guys. I know all the equations. Well, remember in Breaking Bad, like, Jesse might have had it a little better off if his teacher was a little better. Maybe if his teacher was, was Mark Wahlberg instead of Walt Whitman. Uh, you're reaching back too far. It's been a while since I watched Breaking Bad. No, that's fine, you know. It's okay. It's okay. We're bringing it back around. It's okay. No, come bring it around. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> There's a lot of weird teacher and um, water and winds and things going on. Anyway, let's get into the happening. Um, The wind was scary. The math guy. Do you remember the opening line though? Um, if oh yeah, if bees were to disappear, man would go extinct in four years. That was one of the earlier things that we saw, and I thought that bees might have been the answer to this, and I guess it is because I don't know. Are they trying to say there's I think an oxygen thing going I on? I think you it's know? it's a way of setting the stage because I mean, what what the idea seemed to be was nature's way of um defense it was like nature's defense you know the trees and the plants were releasing some chemical to kill humans and you know maybe it's like maybe the trees were doing this to save the bees or you know like it's kind of one of those over it was like shadowing of the is it, it like ties into it in a way whatever shut the fuck up so oxygen wind bees trees survival of the honeyest. Mm, I like honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the opening line of the movie, before we get to the bees on the chalkboard, mm. the opening line is, I forgot where I am, because there's two chicks sitting on a park oh. bench. Yeah, remember that weird <clears throat> shit? Yeah. I had to rewind it, because I was like, wait, what did she just say about cripples? She said, you're, you're at the part where they were deciding whether or not they should kill the killers should the killer what what the what the killers were going to do with the cripple girl yeah so quote for quote it's you're at the place where the killers made you decide what to do with the cripple girl and now that i'm thinking about that again what the fuck does that have to do with any part of this movie well that sounds that sounds like a trolley experiment you know when okay yeah like like, save one person or save all the people that are about to get hit by the train like there's there's a family on one side there's one person on the other decision to make i mean okay let's say you're a killer and the cripple girl might be like a witness or something, but it's like so. Oh. No, don't put your fingers in my mouth. <laughs> I wasn't. Okay, I was telling you to talk in the mic. Oh. <laughs> so, I think it's you don't similar have to, go to that. Close. It's okay. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just moderately in the direction. Yeah. <laughs> trolley. Trolley experiment. Trolley experiment. Trolleys. Is this good? Yeah, you're you're doing great now. Uh, is this- yeah, you're doing. Yeah, you're doing great right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. I don't mean it. Mm, you're, you're sweet to me, <laughs> Jed. We're brothers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't forget. <laughs> Get going with the trolleys. Um. So I mean. The, yeah, these people have to make make a decision on whether or not to. Oh, you know, you might have got a killer because she's gonna tell someone what what happened, and you won't get away with murder. You know. But the killer in this is trees. 
Mm -hmm. So what does that have to do with? I don't think there's a trolley effect. So, Can you stop the trees? I don't. Maybe, even in the end, they never said they stopped it. They were just like, I think it passed. It moved on. Yeah, maybe the trees. The trees were making decisions. Okay. Like they have a like they're conscious of their acts. I don't even know if it was the trees though. Was it wind or was it trees? Definitely seemed like the trees. There was a few times where Mark was talking to trees, and there was a few other times where he was like, I don't think trees were that big of a deal. Yeah, it was weird. It's like, it is, because, I mean, there's just a bunch of theory, right? And he's running around like, I think it's the trees. It might be an attack. I think it's the trees. So you don't really know the entire time. It's I easy. don't even think M. Night Shyamalan knows. Mm. When it ended, he seemed very confused with his answer. Like, no one knows. Well, they say the thing about what the killer made you do with a cripple girl. I don't get it because all that happens after is that people start pausing. Some people are walking backwards. Some people are just paused in place. Dogs are moving. So I guess dogs aren't affected by it, which really never comes into the story either. But dogs aren't affected by it. There's people walking around. And then the blonde idiot starts talking about how she sees people clawing at themselves and she sees blood. And, you know, everyone's frozen. And then she looks at her friend. She's like, hey, what are you doing? And her friend goes, what? page was i on mm -hmm. what page and she pulls her hair like a uh, pointy thing out of her hair i don't know what it, it's for buns yeah i don't know what um, it's called it's like a hair pin of sorts i don't know much. she pulls it out slowly stabs it in her neck her friend stares at her mm -hmm. and then it just kind of cuts yeah it goes over to the construction guys it kind of like bounces along yes like, different horrific scenes it's pretty much just a construction dude just telling jokes like, ha, oh, ha, remember when we saw that wo woman and we went, can you whistle for me? Can you go, woo, woo, woo. Yeah, they did that. And it was like, remember when I did that? And then all of a sudden people start jumping off of roofs. I think probably like, I think like six people fall. You know what I, wait, you know what I just thought about? Hmm. I think six people fall right then. And then the first time that guy Julian goes off. Six people fall, and then the first time Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel see people dead in the road, there's six people. You're gonna have to prove that, dude. I'm serious. We're, when they're falling, I'm. You can't I, be. You can't look, be throwing six, six, six out there if it's not. You, did could, you count? You gotta do the clicker. I bro. know for a fact. Look, I know for a fact okay. that Mark Wahlberg saw six people die. Julian saw six people dead. I don't know for sure if it was with the construction people, but I'm pretty sure it was between six and eight, and I think it was six. She was. Uh, the De, De Chanel was like, like what kind of evil? Like the most evil. She says something about like, it's so evil. It's so bad. Everything's so evil around us. Evil, evil, evil. Evil, 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 evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really like centered around the human experience, right? It's we didn't, we didn't, we didn't like. We never got like the trees, input. No, I mean they they didn't say anything. That's true. Yeah. You, would you like to hear from the trees? Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's all it's all a bunch of human interpretation of the thing, right? So let's get into Mark Wahlberg. Mm, Marky Mark. So we meet Mr. Marky Mark. He hates being called that, but we're probably gonna call him that a lot in this. He's really pressed about some kid named Jake not being incredibly interested in his B lecture. So he says to him, "You should care more about science because your face is perfect. But mm. the problem is, your face is perfect at 15." What about five years? Ten years? Your face might fill up. You might look fucking stupid. And he kind of looks like Taylor Lautner from Twilight. Yeah. The werewolf guy. Yeah, a little bit. A little, like, <laughs> a little bit of that jawline. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. The mm -hmm. jawline and like the way that his hair is like kind of fro-ish, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he very much looks Taylor Lautner. Not now. because looks that like he was like, like he, ran, he ran to school after... <laughs> getting out of his shower on all fours yeah <laughs> freak <laughs> and then he's like you might look downright whack 10 years from now that's quote for quote downright whack doesn't that sound like if he if he wants to like live his life and not be called marky mark he shouldn't be saying shit like downright whack in a movie mm. you know what i mean doesn't that kind of accentuate marky mark uh it kind of like kind of it gives that like uh, like fun teacher adults like I'm still cool too. Like I'm Marky Mark and you're downright whack. 
<laughs> Step to me, and I might just attack. Oh, this sounds like something he would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With like a fresh Prince of Bel Air type beat going on in the background. Yeah, he had like a cool dad, like kind of feel to him during this movie. He's like a cool dad, cool teacher. He always looks like he has more of a mustache than he does. Hmm? His mustache. Like he has like one of those mustaches that's just on the side of his lip, though. That's just like the few hairs. Does he? He just look. I don't know if he does. He looks like he does. I can't confirm that he does or doesn't. <laughs> if you show me the happening right now, where Marky Mark has an, a mustache the entire time, I'd be like, Whoa. "Look, I think he has like I a, didn't notice I think he has a the peach, entire time. I think he has a peach fuzz mustache. You see his mustache? One of those silly ones, you know. <laughs> but anyway, downright whack. Uh, he ends up telling Jake that he will be pretty forever, and Jake points at him in a very "my man." Yeah, my man. Kind of, he's like, yeah. "My man, you my got man. my back." Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "I knew you wouldn't call me ugly in front mm-hmm. of all these people." You looking out for me, bro? <laughs> and then Mark. Gonna... <laughs> so then Mark gets called out of class, and he <laughs> ends up in a room with a bunch of other teachers, and they get informed that there's some kind of contagion. They're like, "Oh, there's a lot of kids things are going on. watching videos on the boob too. Probably watching the Twilight Zone or something. Mm. Something cool." And it pans off to Mark's chalkboard that reads, "If the bee disappeared off the surface of the globe, then man would only have four years left of life." And that's true. It is, but also, what the fuck does that have to do with the movie? I mean, maybe it's a reason why the human, why the trees would get rid of the humans. I guess we didn't see bees. I don't know. We didn't see Were bees, bees gone in this area? Because the whole thing was that that Jacob guy or Jake or whatever didn't care about, um, didn't care about bees that much. And it was happening in big cities. It was happening. Okay. In, like like New York, and then like New Philadelphia, York. and then like Philadelphia, some part of Jersey, mm-hmm. or something like that. Highly okay. populated areas, but I mean, it was really only it really only focused on the East Coast. It was unclear if it happened anywhere else in the world. That's true, and it kind of just stopped out of nowhere mm-hmm. with no explanation. Yeah, three well, months later. Yeah, yeah, no, ex- <laughs> no explanation. It was. But we'll get to that. Um, <clears throat> we should probably mention that Mark Wahlberg's buddy is John Leguizamo, and he isn't a big fan of Mark Wahlberg's wife. Which again is Zoe Deschanel. I don't know what her name is in this. Mm, I think yeah. it might have started with an A. I don't know Mark Wahlberg's name either. And I kept writing down Elliot, and oh, I thought that was Julia. Alma. Alma. It, yeah, it's like Alma or something like Alma. that. It's yeah, Alma. it's like Alma. Yeah. Okay. And Mark Wahlberg's name is Elliot. I just call him Mark Wahlberg in my notes the whole time though. And then I started calling his friend Elliot, Mister uh, Lugazamo. Mm-hmm. I started calling him Elliot, but his name is Julian. Julian, yeah. So I might fuck up a few times. And if you hear me fuck up, it's because I was writing the wrong thing down for a long time. Okay. But Liguizamo, he isn't a big fan of Zoe Deschanel because she was like crying on the wedding night. He has this whole story, this monologue where he's like, Yeah, I walked in the room uh, before your wedding and I saw Zoe Deschanel crying and I just knew that she wasn't ready for this kind of thing. Yeah, the drama. The drama was really getting heated up. It was like, you know, like, oh, they're. What's happening between them? Well, the first time they meet up, he basically just looks at her. He's like, oh, you're here? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's just a whole big thing, which really isn't explained too much. Like, it seems like she had, like, cold feet or, like, maybe one bad night. And he's just like, fuck you. I hate you. You're not good enough for my boy. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. That's fine. That's, We're good. That's okay. It's okay. So Mark goes home. He meets up with Zoe, and they head to the airport to evacuate. We hear about autopsies on dead bodies, and they're like, yeah, it's confined to the New York metropolitan area. And then Elliot, fuck, not Elliot, Julian meets up with Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel, and there's drama. He's a dick to her, the whole thing we were talking about right now. And then they talk, they, they're like, we're going to go on different trains, which I don't get that because it seemed like they had tickets to go on the same train. Maybe they went on different channels of the train or something um i don't really follow what was happening there no they were they were on the same train <clears throat> but julian's julian's wife and partner went on a different train because he was going to get she was going to get a gift for um their daughter's birthday i remember that but zoe said like remember when she grabbed the she, ticket from him she just sat 
She sat somewhere else. Okay, She's so like, she was I'm just not going to diff- sit near him. I'm she was just on a different area of the train. Yeah. She just like gave her ticket in a different time and went somewhere else, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. And that Julian was like, fine, bitch. Yeah, see, I thought that was what was happening, but I was like, it was kind of stupid and unnecessary. So it was, was weird, yeah. Like, why is this happening? It didn't matter. It was a way to like capture, capture it's- like a certain... Like they have some struggles with each other. Yeah. They they're not the best of friends. They're just showing like, hey, there's, we don't like each other that there's much. There's other shit happening. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Besides from the trees. Um, so we head back to the bus. We find out that Philadelphia was attacked. Elliot has to call or not fucking Elliot, Julian. Mm-hmm. Julian is like talking to his daughter. His daughter's name is Jess. And he's like, Jess, we're going to call mom, see what she's doing, blah, blah, blah. He finds out she's on her way to New Jersey. The train keeps going. It keeps stopping also so that everyone can, like, you know, kind of just get a grip on situations because they're all freaking out. They're like, oh, my God, Philadelphia was attacked. Where are we going now? What's going to happen? The train's stopping? The train keeps stopping. Well, it stopped one time, right? Probably just once, but... I guess it's, I guess I meant more like the energy <clears throat> of the train was stopping, you know, because they're all kind of just like freaking out and huddling up with each other. Like, what do we do? Mm. Doomsday, blah, 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 blah. Because they end up they end up stopping the train. They stop the train. Cause they, he talks to the conductor, Mark mm. Wahlberg. Remember that one frog guy that's just sitting in the corner? Yeah. He's just looking left and right. He looks like he has no <laughs> idea what's going on. <laughs> There's some crazy shit going on out there. I'm a train conductor. You would you would train conductor? I don't have the answers. I just drive the train. And then we finally see this video too. of this guy because they're all hanging around uh, at like a bar, right, or like a restaurant or something like that. Mm-hmm. And this um, one, it's like a like a train stop. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It was really forested and shit. It was like kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And then some chick pulls out her phone. She's like, "You guys got to look at this." And she shows a video. Oh yeah, of a guy who went into a lion's den. And he just casually stands in the middle, lets people rip his arms off. Yeah, the lion, the lions tear him up. That was his form of of suicide. Suicide, suicide. Yeah, because the whole thing in this movie is that there's a contagion. I guess it's a good pandemic movie, but when everyone gets infected, they just kill themselves with whatever they see. Mm -hmm. Like right now, like whatever is closest to them, they kill themselves with. Yeah, it prevents. It does brain magic and. (laughs) <laughs> the good old brain magic it turns like the the will to survive off and they have the will to die so this guy's just sitting here he's having a great time getting his arms ripped off and they're like oh my god this guy kids are screaming he hates lions they're at the zoo it's like a zoo he had to be a zookeeper mm-hmm. just took his opportunity but I'm wondering also like in a lot of these things people get infected right next to people who don't get infected and I don't get the logistics of that how is everyone at the zoo fine, but this guy's going in and getting destroyed? It it does. I'm sorry. Excuse me. It maintains. It just like maintains that like, like how does this thing work? Is there is there like an is there an immunity? Like, do some people have an immunity? There are like those scenes where it's confusing because someone like 15 feet away will get it, or someone right next to him, but they don't. Like maybe it's like something in their head like maybe if you have bad thoughts the trees get you yeah and there's so many times where like they try to explain it too like mark Wahlberg would try to make like a scientific equation or something Mm -hmm. and have an answer but then he's just like well i don't know i still don't know i'm not sure i understand they don't have any labs or any tests and they have no idea and also, at one point, like, they're all standing outside, and who gave the dudes the authority to be like, if we stay here, we're gonna die here. Whatever this is, it looks like it's not happening within 20 or 90 miles from here. I'm like, how do you know that? How do you know the specifics of, like, mileages, mileages, mileage, mm-hmm. mileage of how far this is? How do you know what's affecting what? You don't know what's happening. No. No one knows. It's just happening. They're very opportunistic. Given the name, the name of the movie, the happening, it's like, what's happening? It's just the happening. The name of the movie honestly does describe it very well because it's like, what, mm-hmm. what's happening? Yeah, like it's just the happening. There's no, <laughs> there's no answers. The, everyone in the movie and you are just, confused. Yeah, you you know as much as we do. <laughs> 
And then, like, after they get all these notices, you know, like, the zoo thing in Philadelphia, the contagion, blah, 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 they all decide to leave. But everyone showed up to that little train stop on the train, and then they all leave in their own individual cars, except for Mark Wahlberg and his <laughs> buddy Julian. Yeah, everyone had a train, everyone had a fucking car, but... Those, those folks. Like, where did everyone else get the car when mm -hmm. you all showed up on the same fucking train? You right. all traveled together. We were all, we were all traveling. They were all, like, going there. Driving next to the train. They're like, let's stop where this train is stop and see what's going on. Or they all got on right there. It's just like... Just to get to their car because they all so, knew their car was at that breakfast yeah. little fucking spot. Everyone was like, oh, good. This is my stop anyways. <laughs> this is my stop. Yeah. This is where my car is. And Mark's like, wait, I wasn't notified that I had to leave my car here. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> like everyone drove away, but but they—I mean—they caught a ride with someone. They did, but remember when he's running by too? And he's just like, "Come weird. on, let me in your car. You're gonna keep. You're gonna do this. You're gonna leave me I all got, alone." I got a kid. I got. I got people. We're gonna. You got seats. Okay, and we should talk about how he gets that kid because his friend Julian—he's fully aware that if he goes to where his wife is, he's gonna die. But he just decides, you know what? It wouldn't be too bad if my kid was an orphan. And he's like, hey, Mark Wahlberg and uh, his wife that I hate, he made do you want to just keep my kid? Yeah, yeah he, made, he made a hard decision. Hard decision. It was hard really decision. hard when uh, Zoe Deschanel grabbed her hand. Right. Only grab it if you mean it. <laughs> it was but, intense. Dude, it's this whole scene where he's standing there and he's like, can you guys please take my kid? Like, I'm desperate. Don't make me say it twice. And he's like damn near crying. Mm -hmm. And the second, like, they agree and Zoe Deschanel goes to grab her hand and she touches her, he's like, holy fucking grab it if you mean it, I swear to God. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. dude, you're, you're like begging them to take your kid in the second she says that was yes. Like, he's that so was like his star scene in the whole movie. You know, like, to show the... How that, that that parent that parental bond, you know, it was like his star scene. He's like, now's my time to shine. And it's funny too, because this guy's actually in so many movies as a backup character, but I never like I don't know him from any one specific role. I know his face. I kind of recognize his name, like if you say it just because it's a little weird. Oh, like the Walking but Dead? Wasn't he like in the Walking Dead? He might have been. He probably he's in a lot of things as just like a um, side character, maybe like a cop that shows up for a couple seconds yeah, or something. Yeah. He's in a lot of weird tiny roles, but I don't know him as like the main actor of anything or something that's exciting really. Right. But he's yeah. rarely ever the main actor. John Luigi something. Fuck. Yeah. He's in a lot of movies. He didn't. He has a lot mm. of credits, but I just don't really He's not an exciting guy, I guess. No. This is probably his most exciting role. He's not. That one line right he's there. He's not Marky Mark or Johnny Depp or or even Deschanel. I mean, Deschanel's, you know, a little bit. I wouldn't I wouldn't say she's a better actor than him, but she's a little more. There's a little more. I would say she's not a terrible actress, but, like, she's meant for that weird girl role in indie movies. Mm -hmm. And every other movie she's like, in, she kind of like just quirky. takes... Yeah, just the quirky, like, just, mm -hmm. like, kind of, like, alien-esque, like, not much behind her eyes kind of girl. And it works really well And like, for example, like, mm -hmm. what we were talking about earlier, movies like 500 Days of Summer. It works really well, yeah, but when really you put her in that. something that's supposed to be serious, it's weird. Like, uh, what is she in? Spaceballs, too? Um, not Spaceballs. The Hitchhiker's Guide. Oh, The Hitchhiker's Guide. Guide. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. And she's really good in that because she plays, like, that girl is yeah. just kind of... You know, she's there. She's like, she seems smart. She seems cool, but she kind of just seems like weird. Mm -hmm. And it works. I didn't hear her like give a blood curdling scream at all. I don't remember like any kind of blood curdle. And there was like fear. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, she, she has no emotion, is what you're saying. It, yeah, like, I'm not convinced. But is that kind of what Julian was, was trying to say in this too? He was like, I don't know. Your wife has no emotion, blah, blah, blah. Mmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's an acting thing. Yeah. I mean, I even mean, when she was scared, I was like, yeah. I guess it's a bias, too, from her being, like, that other character. She's the Kristen Stewart being. of this movie. Like, Kristen Stewart in Twilight, Bella Swan. No, I don't know that. The the girl in Twilight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about Taylor Loftner. You know Taylor Loftner, but not fucking Kristen Stewart? I don't know, like, a lot of names, bro. I'm... She's the girl that had no emotion the entire five movies. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch Twilight. <laughs> Why'd you know Taylor Loftner? Because you said he was the wolf boy. She's the... The wolf guy. She's the pale girl that and dated I, the vampire. And, 
and you there was a reference point. There was a dude that kind of looked like that guy. That's how I built that conclusion. Okay, she, like, she kind of looks like Zoe De Chanel in the way that she has no emotion and just has black hair and a face. What the fuck are you talking about? And moving on. <laughs> 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 so yeah he hands off the kid and as they're talking about that too mark is getting kind of upset and he's like how do i know you're not gonna die like uh, do we know and, he, and then <laughs> julian's like you want me to throw some percentages at you all right 62 percent mm -hmm. that she's okay mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the exact quote and that's all he says he doesn't like go on he's not like because of this or xyz blah blah no, he's he like, said 62 percent he's like He's like his thing was yeah right his thing was numbers just throwing I think he's a match he's a math teacher and the entire time when trying to stay calm and stuff he used the he would use the math the math thing he'd be like oh boo, 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 you know it's like one of those math equations where you're like numbers. Julie had seven oranges she gave away five she ate two how many are left none. Five, wow. I mean, five are left, but they're not hers. Wow, that's a good math. Good math. You're a good mather. Anyway, he gives off the daughter, mm. and then we move on pretty much to him. We start following him for a little bit. He's driving with his new family, trying to find his wife. They see a bunch of dead bodies hanging, and he realizes that the death juice is in the air. Mm. So he starts throwing the math equations out. Where like, it gets really head. windy. It gets really windy is basically what happens. <laughs> and this is when he looks up. We talked about it earlier, so I won't focus on it. But he looks up. He sees the vent in the Jeep, like the little slit in the cloth. And he's like, oh, my God, I got to tell more math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, everyone calm down. I really like math. It, what was it? He's like, how much money would you have at the end of the month if you take a penny and double? How, how much, much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck calculus? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me. <laughs> and then uh yeah he kind of just tries to make all the kids in the car uh not hate their lives and then the driver mm -hmm. smashes into a tree kills all of them somehow he doesn't die though even though he was in the front he was wearing a seatbelt oh uh, he's wearing the seatbelt the other guy probably wasn't mm -mm. and then he walks out grabs some broken glass slits his wrist and i'm like okay well you knew your child was going to be an orphan yeah that was pretty gnar that was pretty gnarly sound the sound it, they use. For it was the, pretty good. Like it was, it was cool. Like, it but was, like, it was unnerving. Under the pretense of the movie, it wasn't cool. But that poor girl. Yeah, I didn't feel. I actually, I felt. I did feel bad for her because I was like, "Your dad's a fucking idiot." She's gonna grow up and just wonder. But I mean, you know, he was kind. Of, he was a hero. I don't think he was. He was trying to save mommy. He was trying to save mommy. Think All he did was make his daughter an orphan. That's not what he wanted to do. <laughs> it seemed like he did. It seemed but like he was pretty aware he was going to die. It seemed like, yeah, it did, he probably didn't know he was going to die. He knew. I was like, you didn't yeah. have to do that. You, He said, like, can you take my daughter because she'll be safer with you. Mm -hmm. Just stay with them and stay with your daughter so your daughter has a fucking parent. Right. It was pretty stupid, but. It was. He's like, they got uh, one more seat in the Jeep. They, got, they only have one more seat. The other person literally said that they could have brought all of them. Like the family that Mark Wahlberg and Zoe went with? Yeah, because they're like, we got four. Yeah, yeah. come on up. Like, yeah, man. sure, come mm -hmm. over. We have a farmhouse. We have shelter. Mm -hmm. We'll be fine. And he's like, nah, it's all right. I'm going to go fucking die Yeah, around the corner. I got to find my wife. That's kind of how he sounds. <laughs> he's And his crying is like not believable. He almost looks like the Hulk from Avengers, but I know he's not that guy. Mm. Not the same guy at all. But he has he that an, look. He was an alien. Wasn't he in one of the alien movies? Like a ship. Oh, or I think he's like the buddy of Arnold Schwarzenegger, maybe. Maybe. I could be wrong. He he look he's in everything, dude. Honestly. He's in I a think, lot of TV shows. Yeah. I know he's in like special victims unit, like probably for sure. Yeah. Fuck. He's just a real he's a background actor, that's all we could say. Anyway. That, he's like a he's like a semi prominent background ish he's, actor. He's not bad, but he's not like He's not there. Yeah, I mean I'm not we're not um, ripping on the guy, but we're not giving praise to the guy. Yeah, I'm like, it's fine. You know. He's there. So back to the Bergs and their random family they're hanging out Anything with. It's the storyline's fault. <laughs> they come across six dead bodies that they assume might be animal bodies, and then Mark gets out of the car, grabs some binoculars, and also uh, the wife was like, "Hey, husband, can you grab your binoculars that you used to spy on your neighbors with?" Mm -hmm. What the fuck was that line? A little bit of humor in there, like. <laughs> but is that humor? That's just creepy. <laughs> 
is. Why are you spying on your neighbors and why are you telling strangers about it? It's a way it? of alleviating the, the, the serious tone of the... Yeah. I wish it, I could have was, alleviated my headache was, while I was, was watching a, this. It was a comedic relief. Okay. I'll Things were getting a little bit tense there, bro. A little bro. bit silly. Well, you got the kid. You got the kid and all the dead bodies, and you don't want to freak the kids out. So you got to be a little funny. You got to be a little funny. A little funny. You know, like undisturbed. Okay, you know? but when Mark gets out of the car, since their dead bodies like two feet away from them, shouldn't the air be right there, and shouldn't it be infecting him? Like the second the Julian got a whiff of the air, mm. the whole Jeep went down. It was gone. I don't know. I don't get the... You know what? We don't care about logistics. We don't care about logistics. So, everyone... Okay. That's okay. Everyone meets up at a fork in the road. Mm -hmm. And they meet this guy. What was his name? Sergeant... uh, Private... Osti. Private Private Oster. Mm -hmm, Private Private Oster. He says things like, cheese and crackers, when he's upset. Yeah. Cheese and crackers. Oh, cheese and crackers. That made me feel better. Did it? I wasn't. I wasn't as scared. I felt oh, okay. more safe. Made he was a good like... Christian man. <laughs> you can tell he was a good Christian, God fearing man. So they all meet up at this fork in the road, and they're like, "Yeah, people are dying over there. That fork over here at this fork, mm-hmm. back at that fork, definitely dead people." And they all decide just to hang out in the middle of the road, and just figure out what's going on. Which always seems like the worst decision you can do, right? If there's something bad going on, just group up and just stand there in the middle of nowhere. Maybe, maybe. I'm sorry. It's uh, okay, Jets. People get sleepy sometimes. Some nippy, nippy, snip, snaps. <laughs> you look comfy in that mink coat. I'm super cozy. Uh, 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 um, uh, okay, go on. Do you had a you had a statement? Um, I mean, you don't want to panic, right? You don't want to freak out too much. Yeah. So. Just, just like chill. Just chill out. Take a second to breathe. And that's what they're trying to do. You know, they're, that's what like, they're trying to do. They're trying to take it easy, not panic. Oh, yup. Oh, yeah. But anyway, the guy. Ah, uh, <laughs> so the guys that the Bergs are with <laughs> tell them that someone's on the phone with someone in Princeton, which is where Julian is heading. And the chick is like, okay, yeah, my daughter's in Princeton. Uh, but she needs to hide. She's on the phone with her. She's like, you got to hide. You got to go into this room with a window and a tree. And Mark is like, wait, stay away from the tree. Mm-hmm. Trees might be bad. She's like, oh, okay, okay. Don't go near the window with a tree. And then she puts her on speakerphone and we hear her saying, calculus, I see in calculus. And then she died. Like she definitely, I don't know how she died, but she died over the phone for sure. She like jumped out the fucking window. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because the window broke. is like, and then the wind was blown. Remember the wind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a... Yeah, because right after she's dead and you don't hear anything, you just hear... (laughs) The wind. The wind was like the culprit the entire time. Yeah, if you didn't already realize that the trees and the breeze was the problem, Mm -hmm. you pretty much understand it now. Yeah, it was very obvious being a watcher of the movie. I don't know like if people were like... They're running away from the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually coming up here in a second. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they will realize that in a second. You're right. Yeah. So Julian's dead. Her daughter's dead. Uh, That one random chick. We don't know who she is. It doesn't really matter. Fuck her daughter. But Mark and Jess are crying, and the hippie guy that they're hanging out with is going on about how plants are real clever and can do a lot of things. He's like, yeah, plants can turn into this, and then scientifically they can go left, right, up, down, plants. And then Mm -hmm. the military Mm -hmm. guy, Private Oster... Uh, he gets up and he tells everyone what they need to do. They're like, all right, we got to gather up. We got to fucking pile together. We got to avoid the winds. But he's like, but real quick, I have a professional here to talk to you. This is Joe. He's a realtor in the area. Yeah. It's like the only guy that knows anything about the surrounding area was a realtor. <laughs> yeah. The one local realtor. Yeah. Now, this guy knows about houses around here. He definitely knows why the trees we are killing us. We don't have a map, but we have a realtor. Yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. Guess you gotta do with deal with what you got. And yeah. then Zoe just randomly He's tells Mark that um she told him that she was working one night, like working late, but she was like, actually, I was getting food with this guy. And it's this mm-hmm. whole weird thing where they're trying to still set up the thing that Julian was talking about where like she doesn't like him that much, 
but it never has anything to do with the story. By the time you get to the end of the movie, like Mark Wahlberg tries to say something at one point about uh, buying cough syrup. He's like, yeah, you know, there was this pretty girl at the pharmacy and I tried to buy some cough syrup or and I almost did and I was about to do it. And he's trying to spite her. And then she's like, did you really do that? And he goes, no. And then she just kind of feels sentimental. She's like, oh, thank you, Mark Wahlberg, oh, for, really for, for not buying the cough syrup. Yeah. And it's, just, it's like a weird thing. It only comes up maybe two or three times max. I'd say two. It's just that the one time she says it right now, the one time he says it later. And it's just supposed to symbolize that they have a kind of rocky relationship, but they still love each other. Right. They're like still making it through despite what's going on in the world but at the same time it seems like she's just like making we it need, through we need each other now more than ever marky mark but it seems like he's Do always need needed her schnookums. it's really dumb yeah. i mean it's bad it's bad writing yeah it's drama it's like drama well makes you feel feel so human so human love Love, it's a love story. We love love. So the wind starts rustling, people start freaking out, and then Private Oster freaks out, and he goes, My firearm is my friend! It will not leave my side! Mm -hmm. And he keeps saying that, and everyone's like, uh, what are you talking about? And then uh, he shoots himself, people start killing themselves, and Mark Wahlberg is just standing around, he goes, Oh no, the toxin? The toxins affecting them? And he's like, just let me think. Just let me think. And everyone's like, what do we do? Oh, yeah. They split up. Yeah. They're like, what they do we up. do? Oh, they're no, dying. This is before important. they split up. They split but up. But remember, though. they said they, man, this is a, this is a key, key okay. component. Okay. They're like, key component me. Um, We need to, they've been killing people in big populations, but if we lessen our numbers, maybe the trees won't detect us. Remember that bit? Yeah. It really doesn't work though. It, but I mean that was their idea. That's why they split up because they're like, oh, you know, maybe if we separate, the trees won't catch us. But you didn't even talk about Mark mm, Wahlberg doing bitch. his experiments before they get to that. Bitch, you didn't even talk about uh, these nuts. That's crazy. Okay. Well, Mark, before he comes to that conclusion that they all have to split up, he goes, design the experiment careful observation measurements measurements that's what i'm trying to do interpret the experimental mm -hmm. pattern interpret 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 and then he goes oh my god and everything jed said can't be in groups gotta split up blah 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 yeah well they what if it's in the plants the group that was larger than ours maybe people are setting off the plants why did they split to begin with because there was the group with the army know. guy over there and then Marky Mark's group on the other side of the hill? I don't know. They didn't make the plan before they started splitting up. I feel like they had to have shot it in the wrong way, and then later they were like, let's explain it. Is that really how it happened? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. They were already split up, and then he started killing himself, and then Mark is like, oh, the design, the experiments, blah, 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 and then he's like, right. let's split up. It doesn't make sense. Like It's like it's cut out of order. Mm -hmm. This whole thing is completely out of order. Like, they probably would have There's... already been split up and he would have came to that conclusion. But either way, if he did come to that conclusion and they were already split up, then it still wouldn't make sense. Because mm -hmm. they're already, yeah. It's fucking weird, but he just says, stay away from the wind. The movie, <laughs> I, have you ever seen Birdemic? Shock and no. Terror? Mm -mm. It's kind of like a play on Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Okay, I've seen Except that it's one. really stupid and it's just like CGI birds flocking around and people trying to swat them away basically the whole mm -hmm. time. Mm-hmm. The movie was already very much like that because the dialogue's terrible. It basically seems like they're swatting away birds. But right now, they all just start running around in a field like complete idiots. And they're like, it's catching up. It's getting closer. And they're just running left and right and all <laughs> around each other like morons. Yeah, the, the grass is blowing and people are Rustling. like falling over. And like, like ah, it's here. Ah, the wind. <sighs> like the fact that when you look Aaron at all the behind the scenes of this... It's hard to imagine that they didn't know what they were doing. Because M. Night Shyamalan, all the time, he's like, you guys just didn't get the movie. You didn't understand it. And it's like, what's there to fucking understand, dude? You guys are just running around like morons the whole time. It kind of reminded me of that episode of South Park where there's... Uh, the pandemic episode with the guinea pigs? Yeah, and they're like, it's in the air. And it's like, in They the get air. infected and they're like, oh, blah, 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 like fall and rolling all over the ground. Kind of reminded me of that a little bit. And it turns out it was just like guinea pigs that dress in weird outfits. Yeah. Firefighter guinea pigs. <laughs> that and... one's a pirate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a spider pig. Yeah. Spider pig. 
oh my god yeah like like it's like every time they find a new one it's like an upgrade on guinea pig like there's like guinea pig levels you know how they decided that they would do that episode they like got guinea pigs and put them in costume they were like we found out that because those were actual guinea pigs in the episode like real just images they put on the mm -hmm. screen and they were like we found out that if you put a guinea pig in a costume and then put it down it just gets really uncomfortable and just stands there and doesn't do anything uh, so that's why all of them are just standing there not moving in the episode <laughs> what do i do <laughs> guinea pig in a costume they don't like them for some reason Hmm. Probably, it's probably oh. a little toughy for the little guinea pig. <laughs> stop doing the fucking baby voice. <laughs> <laughs> so right now the wind's rustling. They stop running around, <laughs> and then Mark Wahlberg. It cuts to them like in a house, and he's just talking to a tree, like literally. He is talking to a tree. Mm -hmm. He's just going. Is it okay if my new daughter and my wife go to the bathroom? That's but then he starts touching know. it. And he's like, oh, it's just plastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was breezy in there. Remember the tree was like blowing was around in the wind? And you thought it was going to like talk like, back oh, to him for a yeah. second? You're like, are they going to have a conversation? Talk back or kill him or something, yeah. <laughs> Pull out a knife and just... <clears throat> yeah, dead. <laughs> or choke him out with his branches? No, Marky Mark, you die. And then it turns out they're in like a bomb shelter house. Like when Indiana Jones went to that bomb shelter town and like fucking, uh, what was it, the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull or whatever? Mm. Well... Um, He's, they're at a bomb shelter house. They're at a bomb shelter house. And they start deciding that they need to leave. Also, they just have some new kids hanging out with them, too. Because I guess when they split up, they got a couple, like, 15-year-olds to hang out with. 13-year-olds, maybe. Mm-hmm. My high schoolers. Yeah, just a couple like. little fucking weird kids. Mm-hmm. And they're hanging out now. Some old guy gets infected, and he turns on a giant rideable lawnmower, lays down in the middle of the grass, kills himself. I do think that's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Yeah, I was waiting for that shit to happen. That was pretty... We saw people hanging earlier, and we saw a bunch of lawnmowers next to it, and Jed was like, why don't they just use the lawnmowers? Yeah, they had all the lawnmowers just lined out on the street, but they decided to take the fucking ladders and... Yeah. Hang themselves Get some rope the and hang themselves when they could have just used the lawnmowers? It's like, you know, it's like maybe maybe there was some choice in, in the matter. Maybe, like, even after it happened to you, you got to choose how you did it to yourself. It, it, it kind of seemed like it was just the closest thing to them. But then it kind of didn't sometimes. But right? then it didn't, exactly. Like the lawnmower thing, you know? Like yeah. They hung themselves, but they could have just... They could have just lawnmowered themselves. And then you see a guy was, lawnmower himself. It was, it's like, a, uh, like aesthetic. Like the, the visual of people hanging from trees as, as you drive down the road... It's they definitely little... did that specifically just so you could see all the bodies hanging when they went by. So they mm -hmm. would add like a suspense factor. Yeah. But, you know. They should have taken the lawnmowers out of there. They could have went the lawnmower route. Here I am, confused. <laughs> Wondering so, how this makes sense in the grand the, scheme of things. Maybe that's the point. Why did they just use the lawnmowers? That comes later. <laughs> so there's a new group now. It's Mark Wahlberg, Zoe Deschanel, Jess the kid, and then two new high school kids. And they head over to a house and they find a man inside of the house. They don't really see him at first, but they know there's a man in there. And they're like, hey, come on, come give me some food for my new daughter, Jess. We just need a little bit of food. And Mark's way of trying to convince the dude that they're all normal and not affected is by singing, Old Blackwater, keep on moving. Mississippi moon, won't you keep shining on me? Oh, black water, keep on moving. <laughs> Mississippi river, won't you keep on shining? Yeah, I don't know the depiction of it, but it's like, it's like a, you know, old timey song that appeals to, dude. It's a someone who might someone in... who might be living in a shack in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That must be yeah. his thought process, but like, could you imagine being someone in a house taking solace and you're trying not to let crazy people in your house and someone's just like, Mississippi moon. I'd be like, get, you're literally the problem. I'd be like, I really like that song. <laughs> I really like, you know what? Go ahead and come in. I'm not as hungry. See, if Mark Wahlberg was trying to, pe was trying to appeal to you, he'd probably get in, but anyone else, he, they're very confused. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Don't acknowledge me. Keep going. It was weird. It was it was kind of funny. One of those goofy things, kind of very similar to that, like goofy teacher, cool adults. Yeah, yeah. Funny dad. He is thing. really trying to be a science teacher, like through and through. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That seems like something one of my science teachers would do. They're always goofy little men. I try to appeal, appeal to my better side or whatever. Well, the kids try to appeal to his better side. Because mm. they start banging on the door. They're like, open the door, bitch. Come on, pussy. Kicking and ran. Yeah, they called him a pussy. Yeah, they called him a pussy. They start beating at the door. The homeboy was like, all right, during this scene, call him a pussy. <laughs> no, like you mean it. I think they call did. Call him a bitch. I bet they, they took that. They did that scene over and over again. I wasn't convinced that he, he wanted to say pussy. It's like not, the kid? Yeah, it's not like when he was saying it, he kind of had a little bit of like... Resentment toward M. Night Shyamalan for or, making him say pussy? Or maybe like he was scared that he might get in trouble. Like his mom or dad home, were going to yeah. ground him? Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, I know what you said on the set of that movie. Are you sure I could say this? <laughs> they're looking, his parents are looking back, they're like, yeah, yeah. And they get home, they beat him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kill you, kid. <laughs> you can never say pussy again. Never say pussy. Even, even though you're paying our mortgage right now. Don't say it. <laughs> yeah, money, money. Don't say it. Don't look at it. So they call him a bitch. They call him a pussy. And the dude casually just opens the door, sticks the barrel of his shotgun out, and blows a fucking kid's chest out. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah, that was pretty wild. Put some, put some holes in that boy. And then Mark's just like, oh my god, oh my god. And then he tried to like jump over and like, you know, catch him too, but he gets blasted. And then he looks over, the other kid's standing next to the window, and he's looking at the other kid who got blown up. And then the fucking barrel of shotgun just slowly peeks out that window mm -hmm. too. Yep. That that barrel is a creeper. Oh god, it was it's a fucking sneaky funny. little barrel. It was a sneaky little and and the guy on the inside, we never see him, we just see the shotgun, but he keeps yelling, he's like, Don't let that shit air in here. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the air is bad. The house is all old and fucked up. And it's so funny too because everything is just so convenient in this movie. You know, like Mark Wahlberg and Julian them, they're left back when all the cars are there. Only the two 13 year old kids get shot in the face, and they just they have a conversation there after the kids get shot for probably like three minutes. And it's not until Zoe yeah. Deschanel is like, "Hey, we should um leave and make sure we don't die too." And he's like, "Oh, oh yeah, okay, you're probably right." Yeah. And then the guy in the house says says another something like, "Yeah, I'm get out of here. Get out of here with that shit air. Yeah. <laughs> get your shitty air out of here. This is a warning." Yeah, he yeah. kept saying, "This is a warning" as he shoots kids in the face. <laughs> Dead. You gotta really wonder where this guy's mindset is, because like I get it, you're trying to like contain yourself and stay away from the shitty air, but you open the door and let the shitty air in just to shoot a kid in the face. Yeah, maybe, you know, it's just another way of saying no. Like, Please go away. Yeah. It's a good reason. It's a good reason. I mean, yeah, when someone, like, shoots kids in the face, I usually tend to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm usually, like, not, I don't want to be around there anymore, you know? Mm -mm. Or maybe I take kids I don't like there. <laughs> and get them killed? Yeah. Hey, kick that door. You... All the annoying kids, kick this door. <laughs> There's a fun guy in there. He has pizza. <laughs> and popcorn. <laughs> and pizza popcorn movies. Pizza popcorn movie night. <laughs> All the Harry Potter movies are in there. One to seven. You don't like Harry Potter? Too bad. Porn. He has porn. <laughs> <laughs> Porn and pizza. <laughs> Is this like, that would never appeal to like mainstream kids are like, I have a cell phone now. <laughs> I don't need it. Well, no, your cell phone doesn't work, you uh, dumb bitch. Oh, wow. No one's cell phone you're, works right now. They're out of minutes. Yeah, you got you a data. Your data plan ain't happening. <laughs> so moving on, our favorite family finds some old lady to hang out with, and she says she likes her solitude. She doesn't keep contact with the outside world. So, you know, they're like, we're going to tell you about what's been happening the past three days. Mm. And she goes, no. I don't even want to know. I don't care. Oh, yeah, she had no idea what was happening. She didn't, because she doesn't have internet, she doesn't have phones, TV, anything like that. She just lives off the grid. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of the night, the old lady and Mark have a convo that goes kind of like this. She walks up, she's like, planning on stealing something. And Mark goes, no. This bitch is obviously senile or something. There's some wrong, something ain't right about her. <laughs> and then she goes, planning on murdering me in my sleep mm -hmm. he goes oh no <laughs> yeah it's just a really fucking weird cutscene. like the way it's depicted the way mark is just like no whoa right it was very 
It's just like un- unnaturally casual the whole way he acted. It just seemed her. like a trailer for a comedy movie. It was some like for Ted again. It seemed like something he would do in Ted, and it didn't fucking make sense. And then the next morning, the old lady puts a giant doll in her bed. She gets accused, or she she accuses Mark of stealing from her. Mm-hmm. She's like, "You fucking stealing!" She's obviously seen now. Or at something. this point, you she... have like you have to assume that she's under the impression of the wind. But at the same time, you're like, she was kind of being weird the night before. So mm-hmm. was she the whole time? Did it just happen? Like, I I don't know. Right? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe she was took longer to affect her. Yeah. There was a, there was a lot of that throughout the movie, like uh, trying to guess like if their behavior was n- natural or or were they infected, or was it just bad acting? Mm-hmm. It was all bad acting. That's an understatement. It was all bad acting. Yeah, I can't think of anyone who was. I was like. Like really? exceptional, any exceptional actors in here? Yeah, I just wasn't convinced. No. I mean, like, there are some theories the about wind. this. The wind was the best the, the trees were the best yeah. actors. There is a theory about this that, like, people were doing this kind of seriously, which is why it seems almost a little more serious in the beginning of the movie. Mm. And they all started to realize as they were acting out that it was, like, a terrible B-movie, so they just acted like it was a B-movie. Oh, really? Which would make sense if you watch the movie as it is, because it does seem like they try a little bit harder in the beginning, you know? But then as you're watching the making of, too, like that clip we play in the beginning where Mar- Mark is just overly, like, hyperventilating. Right. They're like, we spent all our money on the first 15 minutes of the movie. Uh, that scene where people are jumping off the cliffs, those people really jumped, or those, those people really jumped off those buildings. We had to give their family money. We don't have any more people. We don't have any more people. And now you got to just make a bunch of weird moans and run around in a forest or in a in a field for the rest of the movie. Right have like dozens of house fans just like <laughs> taped to a guy to run around and be like the wind. episode of South Park where they're like sending uh Her- Henrietta the the goth girl over to a camp so she's not goth anymore and then she comes back emo and <laughs> the plants are controlling them <laughs> that w- that had to have been the happening honestly that had to have been based off of the happening because they literally just have plants rustling around. They're like, these are just ficuses I have vague, with vibrating pots. I have like a little bit of memory of that episode, not really. It's the Edgar Allan Poe one. Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you the way you are? <laughs> just thought I'd switch it up a little bit. Okay, so... <laughs> The wind got the chick. She's crazy. She starts walking backwards, and then Mark runs inside the house to try to, like, you know, block the the draft from getting in so they don't go crazy. But the old lady runs to each individual window, not even just one. She runs to each window one after another and starts banging her head through it so that all, all, mm. the, all the wind comes inside. Yeah, working with the wind. And what is that? Like, does that mean that they have some kind of cognitive thinking? Like, they're not just trying to kill her? Because that would mean that now she's not just trying to kill herself. She's trying to get the wind to get Mark Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. She's working with the wind. And I don't know if that brings a different element to the movie. I really don't. It didn't really exist prior. It didn't exist prior, like but the, did it change anything? It was the indu- introduction to an idea. But wait, sure, she's yeah. the last person who gets infected in the entire movie, so it didn't change anything. It never mattered. Right. Maybe like it's like part of the evolution of the happening. Well, I guess, you know what? I guess the happening does come back later, so maybe it has it gives them some mm-hmm. kind of thought process to infect other people later. Yeah, kind of like a zombie thing where it's like you want other people to be you. Mm-hmm. You want to? Is it? Wait, I think it's called. I think it's called like maybe Don't Blink or something. No, I don't know if that was Don't Blink, but there's another movie where they kind of like people kind of go crazy and they. Oh wait, that's just like Invasion of the Body Snatchers kind of thing, right? Where, like, they all turn kind of alieny, and then they're like, hey, come over here on this side. It's a lot cooler being alien, and they all try to kill them, or something like that. I think it might be one they, of those movies in that vein. Uh, yeah, the the body snatchers. Yeah, the, That's space, kind of the, plot of that. the space plants. They would, like, release a spore. And exactly. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they kill themselves. I think they just, like... They just try to get other people to be aliens, so they could, like, kill other people, maybe. Or so they, yeah. they could just, like, take over the world. Yeah. And I think it was just a, a mind thing. Like, 
I don't know if they were growing the plants. I think they like started growing the plants and just furthering along the plants' life. They so what's like, the end goal of this movie? Is what I'm trying to figure out. The like, happening. What's the, what's the end goal? Just things happened. Of the happening. Yeah. Mm. Like, what do you think the end goal is? Um. I still don't know. I like you know. I like the idea of the trees being being the culprits but it also it it also could be an inside job so you think it was the government it could have been cuz they did say that at the end they were like well it only happened in like a finite area it could have been like the government or something mm-hmm. else and then it happened in F- France it did happen in France at the very end yeah yeah yeah, the whole time, you know, you don't really know if it's happening anywhere else but the East Coast. It's really kind of folk Like, it's all New York or pretty fucking close to New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of... I guess it could have been an experiment. Yeah. I, like some MK Ultra kind of shit. Yeah. Putting trees in the water supply. <laughs> putting trees in the water supply. Liquid su- trees. Instead liquid. of liquid acid in the water supply, they put liquid trees. Liquid trees. <laughs> Everyone's just drinking tree sap and it's making them go crazy. Imagine what it was like cleaning up all those bodies. Yeah, like after a kind of pandemic like that, like I guess we kind of are cleaning up bodies a different way with our pandemic, but like just them killing themselves on the floor, hanging themselves from trees or like going under a fucking lawnmower. Just bodies everywhere. It's gnarly. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. What a waste of meat. Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer would have loved that. Mm-hmm. Eat him. <laughs> okay, so I guess before... We're already talking about the end, but pretty much just what happens is that, like, Zoe Deschanel and then Jess are stuck in one side of some stone room. Mark Wahlberg is in another one, but it's kind of far away, but they have, like, a pipe that's letting them talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, I wish you were here, this, that, blah, blah. They're reminiscing about their love, and they mention their first date, how Mark Wahlberg got them mood rings, and then Zoe goes... And then we checked out the little chart and we found out that purple meant I was horny. Mm -hmm. You love that. (laughs) Another joke. It's not even a joke, though. It's it's not a joke, though. That's the thing. Like, it might be a joke for us as the audience. Maybe. I don't know if I could say it was. But the way she's saying that, she sounds so fucking serious. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like they were trying to make that, like, a real serious thing where they're like, we're about to die. But remember these good times? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was cute. It was cute. I, it's it's cute. It's cute. You're this, right. It's this pretty Chanel cute. makes it's me pretty... horny. <laughs> she makes you a little she makes purple me... mood ring. Mm-hmm. Put a mood ring on me, horny. Put a mood ring on my penis. Call it a cock ring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Watch it change colors. <laughs> the penis or the, or the mood ring? The penis. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you talking about? it's a little just funny. So they start talking <laughs> inhumanly, or they continue talking inhuman, I mean, inhumanely, really. Mm-hmm. And then eventually they're like, "We're just gonna walk outside, see what happens." Mm-hmm. He walks outside, yeah. nothing happens. She walks outside, nothing happens. They end up in front of each other. Trees are just rustling violently, <laughs> and then the nothing wind happens. Is still there, yeah. yeah, they walk inside the house. They're just chilling. They're like, "This is pretty cool." They sit down and they go. I guess the event must have ended before we walked outside of the room. <laughs> the convenience factor is on their side this whole movie. Mm-hmm. It's because he's a teacher. It's because he's a scientist. Mm, science. No real science, man. Science prevails every time. So really, nothing happens. Three months later, Zoe is now the full-time mom of Jess, but she still gets called aunt because I guess she probably is like staying true to Julian to mm. where she doesn't like her that much. And then Mark is a dad. And the news says something about plants rapidly evolving their chemicals. And then the news guy goes, It was an act of nature. We will never truly understand it. It was a warning. Like the first spot of a rash. We are a harm to this planet. And the other guy's like, Government! Mm -hmm. George Bush did Mm, 9-11. Inside job. George Bush did the trees. Yeah, yeah. He did the trees. Oh, and... There's some big news. Some... Zoe's pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? Why is she pregnant? Why does this matter? When did they ever even because have Because Dirk sex? Diggler got up in Deschanel's... Mm, she got up in there. So the porno did happen. Yeah. Dude, Dirk Diggler... She's pregnant. He's a big old dick. She's fucking pregnant. Uh, he sorry. has a big dick. 
Willem yeah. Dafoe is a big dick too. Yeah. Deschanel is a deep vagina. Oh, wow. That's a statement. <laughs> Can you confirm that, Deschanel? Uh, you know what? Don't don't confirm it. We don't want the answer. In the end, we see some French people and they're like, Oi! The wind is back! Sacre bleu! Stella Arctur! Stella Arctur! With my cigarette! Au revoir! Papa. Oi! And then people start walking backwards and the happening's back. The mm-hmm. trees are back. So basically, this movie started, it happened, trees started rustling, trees stopped rustling for Mark Wahlberg, and then later, Zoe gets pregnant and trees start rustling again. That's yeah. the whole movie. You could, I mean, you could take out all the acting and all the words and just show the people like running away from the wind and killing themselves. You really could. Like They kill themselves, people run away. You'd get the same gist. Trees ruffle, trees ruffle. You'd have as much understanding at the end of the movie as you would with all the dialogue. No one had to say anything. Not a single thing. If this was, like, before talkies were made, if this was a silent movie, it would have been the same. Like, it would have been fine, I guess, right? Talkies. Talkies. I like movies with words. Movies with words technically are talkies. What? That's what they are. Because before before we had movies with words, you know, we had silent movies. Uh Uh-huh. When the movies first came around and there was dialogue and like actual words in them, they they started getting called talkies. Talkies. So technically, every movie is a talkie. That's cute. <laughs> every movie that has words in it, that is. E, just put like an e on it. It's a talkie. <laughs> it's a talkie. It's like you're talking to like a three year old. It's a good old talkie. I'm gonna go to Davy's house. Davy. Mom, can I go to Davy's house? Ooh, Johnny. So, so that was the happening. There was 48 kills in the happening, and I will say that was a pain in the ass to keep track of. How confident are you in your numbers? I'm very confident. Yeah. I'm very. I didn't have the clicker, but I'm confident. I look forward to you having that clicker. Yeah, I'll get the clicker eventually. You're you're, you're going to be like so accurate and my life's going to be better. Mhm. Really? Um zero boobs. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no boobs. There are no boo- no boobs in this movie. None of that. None of that. M. Night Shyamalan would never boob it up. There was one cool review I saw on Letterboxd. It was a one star from Diamond Bolt. And it says, Has anyone made the joke of this movie making you want to kill yourself yet? <laughs> I think they're... Hmm. I think they did it. They they made that joke. They made the joke. <laughs> they didn't have to ask if someone else made it. They made the joke. Mm-hmm. Shit. Does this make does this movie make you want to kill yourself? I guess if I had to watch it over and over and over again <laughs> as a you, form of torture. If you were stuck in a room and you were filled with screens only playing the happening for the rest of your life. Probably kill myself. Probably would. It would unless like you know they they switched up dinners and there was like chicken tender night, spaghetti oh, night. Oh yeah, you got like you get like different last meals. Mm-hmm. Different meals. I could probably do it for a while if like the food's good. Eventually it'll be a last <laughs> meal. Eventually. If the... Eventually. Uh Roger Ebert actually rated this and he rated it three stars, which I thought was kind of crazy, especially since the last movie that I discussed was um The Conjuring. And he rated it one star, and I feel like in comparison, it's kind of weird. I mean, I didn't love The Conjuring that much, and I thought it was a lot of issues, but anyway, he says, he starts off with the Albert Einstein quote, which definitely isn't an Albert Einstein quote, but it says, if the bee disappears from the surface of the earth, man would have no more than four years to live. Why he wanted to start on that really confuses me, because I don't know where he went with this review, but the important parts are, he says, an alarming prospect and all the more so because there has been a recent decline in the honeybee population. Perhaps it is comforting to know that Einstein never said any such thing. Less comforting, of course, for the bees. The quotation appears as a blackboard, uh, on a blackboard, near the beginning of M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening, a movie that I find oddly touching. It is no doubt too thoughtful for the summer action season, but I appreciate the quietly realistic way Shyamalan finds, uh, finds to tell a story about the possible death of man. I'm skipping around, but toward the end of this, this is his uh, conclusion of this whole review. What I admire about The Happening is that its pace and substance allowed me to examine such thoughts and ask how I might respond to a wake-up call from nature. Shyamalan allows his characters space and time as they look within themselves. I think that's the most ridiculous fucking thing I've ever heard. And I don't get, like, 
Look, I get rating this like three stars if you enjoyed yourself, but like Roger Ebert also or always is like rating movies as like this is my definitive rating based off of all the other movies I've seen based off of what it takes to make a movie this that blah blah blah. Mm. And it's weird to me that someone like Roger Ebert can look at this 60 million dollar movie with the worst dialogue I've ever seen and just go, these characters really define themselves. I don't right. like do you at any point in this movie like I'm just don't take what I said no. into heart. Do you think these characters define themselves ever? Um, I felt very standard. Right? Like, like they're just very, pe- they're people. They exist. Yeah. They're standard. They have like relationship things going on. But like not anything that's going to stand out. And you know, like they love, know? yeah. And whether, I mean, Mark Wahlberg, there weren't any heroes. There weren't any heroes. People were just regular people. That's a very good point. Like, who's the hero in this? Who mm-hmm. wins in this movie? What's the point of it? What's the outcome even? Like, what even? I mean, they say It comes back again, I guess. You know, like, they still have their lives and the little girl. But they didn't and... save anyone. Like, they kind of just lucked in. They pretty much, they almost killed that girl by just walking out of that room. And it wasn't even, mm-hmm. they didn't have the girl in mind and saving the girl. They were just like, oh, I miss you. I want to see you right now. So Zoe Deschanel walked out of the room with the girl. They easily could have died. They could have watched that girl kill herself just so they could have been like, hey, my mood ring went purple and that made me horny. Right. Well, yeah, there's like that maybe, you know, if not if, but when I think they hit that wall, they're like, okay, it's, it's, it's not a matter of whether or not we're going to get it, but when, so maybe instead of living out these grueling, this this time, you know, wishing we were fucking, let's just go kill ourselves. I agree, but I don't think that's what what was going through their head. Like that should have been what was going through their head. But I think based off the characters they and based on how that went. They should have had sex and we should have seen all of it. Okay. That's a bold statement. A sex scene. Maybe you're right. Maybe a sex scene would have made this these characters define themselves a little more. But Roger Ebert goes on to say those they meet on the way, those they meet on the way are such as they might indeed plausibly meet. He's just saying a lot of things right now. Those they meet on the way are such as they might indeed plausibly meet. That's a weird What the I, fuck? I guess I kind of get what he's saying there, but that's just a weird, you're just going too off right there. Anyway, he says, even the TV and radio news is done correctly. Do not agree. As convenient cliches as ter- uh, about terrorism give way to bewilderment and apprehension. I mean, I guess, but I feel like all the TV and radio hosts kind of sound like blubbering idiots that, that didn't know how to report news. Very hectic. It, yeah, it was it's hectic. Very hectic. That's the, that's the best word to describe it. It's not like, it's not this deep thing. I suspect I'll be in the minority in praising this film. Yeah, probably. It will be described as empty, uneventful, um, but for some, it will weave a spell. It is a parable, yes, but it is also simply the story of these people and how they live their lives and existence (laughs) have suddenly become problematic. We depend on such a superstructure to maintain us that one or two alterations could leave us stranded and wandering through a field if we are that lucky. This is the stupidest fucking review. Well, I mean, this this movie does have that agenda sort of vibe to it where it is kind of geared towards... You know, humans being confused, footprint, and how humans okay, like a carbon footprint and what we're doing to the world, like how humans have affected the world, our behaviors and things. It does, it does kind of have like agenda sort of. But they depict it in a very birdemic way, and I know you haven't seen it. I've referenced it twice, but in birdemic, it's a really stupid movie. Like I said, bad dialogue, bad quality. I've seen a, um, the first like the old fucking gray and white one. Yeah, yeah. No, this one. I don't remember that one as much, but Birdemic, like, they try to do, like, some weird nature thing where they're like, Mm -hmm. the birds are doing this because they're mad at us because the world and nature, Mm -hmm. blah, 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 and that's what they're doing in this, but, like, you know, when you're trying to make a deep, when you're trying to do a deep thing like that, but the whole movie is shit, it's hard to kind of get your point across. And and it it also appeals to our self-destructive tendencies and, like, our desire for the world to end and, like, the world to end and fix itself. Um, and, you know, you have like people who are preppers and people who think that, you know, North Korea is going to bomb America or whatever. And, and everyone's like scared or, you know, like some disease is going to wipe us out or whatever. Or a meteor. And, and there's something in us people, like, especially as angry, sad people who have 
a desire for the world to end just because it would level the playing field or the whatever. Or just fucking kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> fucking so you're saying this everyone. movie is very emo. It it appeals to the people who anticipate the world ending like that. Or people that shop at Hot Topic. People that eat at Golden Corral. <laughs> they just want the world to end? Yeah, all of them. They have no regard for personal safety. They're like, fucking burn it down. So I don't know, Jed, what do you, what do you rate the happening out of five? On a one to five basis. And you could do halves too. Mm, I like a two. A two? That's fair. I like, I like the idea and I like the the possibilities. It it you know, it like it works. Like it plays with my imagination. If it it seems as though it's something that can actually happen because I don't really understand shit about the natural world or whatever. So, you know, like maybe like it's something that seems like it can happen. But I think the acting was really bad and the storyline was really bad. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the wind. <laughs> the wind was my favorite character. The wind was your favorite character, yeah. your favorite actor in the movie. Yeah. I like that plastic tree. I thought it held its own in that scene with Mark Wahlberg. Mm hmm. That yeah. was that went well. I'm pretty close to you. I gave it a two at first, but then I was kind of thinking about it. I was like, I don't know if I can give this over a one and a half just because it was a sixty million dollar movie that was undoubtedly one of the biggest pieces of shit I've ever seen. Mm. But like it is in that it, it's in that world where it's so bad that it's good. Like it's easy to watch. It goes by pretty fast. It's fun mm -hmm. to watch because it's like it's just so outlandish that it's entertaining for mm -hmm. sure. Like this yeah, is a movie that I totally. will rewatch multiple times. Like, OK, do you give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Like just overall. Oh, man. If you had to give it one. We well, make a point. Or a neutral. Like, like um, I'm I'm pretty neutral. Like, like, a, like I a definitely, thumbs to the side. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't seek it out. I'm I'm not like, oh, I'm going to watch The Happening. But if someone was like, ooh, let's watch The Happening, I'd be cool with it. Yeah. Personally, I'd give it a thumbs up. Like, I even though, like, my rating says that it's probably, like, I feel like a thumbs up usually has to be, like, above a two and a half, you know, just to be, like, above the neutral spot. Like, hey, mm -hmm. this is this was good. But I give it a thumbs up just because it is so bad that it's good. I feel like rating it, I got to rate it lower because it does fucking suck like it's it has, abysmal it has a lot of visual appeal i mean it has so, like there's some stuff there's that some really m night cool does that's kind of cool yeah and like cool yeah like watching people jump off of a roof just one after the other you know like yeah it doesn't look as good as it should but it doesn't look as bad as it should for what it is mm -hmm. you know but i mean like but then I, that's when i also bring it into the conversation like it's 60 million dollars maybe it should have looked better you know so I'm like, I don't want to rate it higher for that reason that I'm like, you wasted $60 million on this and you could have easily done it for one. But yeah, I give it a mm -hmm. thumbs up. I give it a low rating. I like it. I enjoy it, but it does suck. It's terrible, but mm -hmm. I like it. Like it's, it's cool. It's a fun movie and it is, I disagree with you a little bit on the fact that like I would seek this out and I would put it on just for fun, mm -hmm. just because I think it's a fun movie to watch. Like it's entertaining. I've always kind of liked it. This is the first time I've watched it, like, and just paid full attention to it. But I, I think it's fine, you know. It's a terrible movie. I don't think it should be praised as a, as a great movie. And I think it's good that it's on, like, the 50 worst movies of all time list. Because mm. it's pretty bad. But, and especially in reference to, like, when he made this, too. Like, M. Night has, like, made some really good stuff. Some really shitty stuff. And this is one of them. But, yeah. I mm. like it. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, yeah. But, Jed, I have a fuck, Mary kill for you. Okay, okay. You have Mark Wahlberg. You have the guy that shot the kids with the shotgun. And you have me. Mm. Mary Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Fair. Um, fuck you. I'm your brother. <laughs> Step brother. You're right. Hey, step brother. <laughs> step brother. What are you doing stuck in that scene? I mean, this is like, like a a trending category on you porn. Like it's not that weird. <laughs> it's all the rage right now. It's not that. It, yeah, step siblings. Fucking your step siblings are in. Yeah, and I'd kill the guy with with the in the house. 
I'd marry Mark Wahlberg just because he's a stud. Just because he's a beautiful guy? Yeah, he's Dirk Diggler, dude. Dirk Dinklage? He's got a big old dick. <laughs> Dink Dinklage? Yeah. Doug Dimmadome? I mean, if anyone's going to be like... I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if Mark would be the top or I'd be the top. <laughs> I'd like to think that we'd share. You'd share? You'd swap? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Well, I think you did good, Jed. Hey. I like where I like your decisions. Thanks. I like yeah, your yeah, decisions. Yeah. So, guys, this was the happening from twenty eight or I no, don't from two thousand eight. Fuck you. Sorry, I don't actually. Want oh. to fuck you. Okay, he doesn't want to fuck me. This is the happening from two thousand eight. Uh, give some uh some applause to my brother Jed. Uh, his first time on Horror Soup, his first appearance. Woo! Pow! Pow! pow. Nice noises. Boom! 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 Book! 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 Shout right. out to Jed. Um. He comes around every so often. Got him on the show. Jed, uh, thanks for coming, bud. Thanks for having me, Caleb. Thanks for coming. And i like to thank all of you out there who are, you know, just doing the right things that are good. Thanks, Caleb. Back to you, Caleb. <laughs> so if you guys like the show and want extra content, <laughs> go check out patreon.com slash horror soup. This movie or this month's bonus movie discussion is Cats, the musical with my buddy James from Night Shift Video, NSV13, all that fun stuff. I'll suck your blood. Other tiers include polls, movie commentary, Tales from the Crypt and Twilight Zone episodes in chronological order, Amityville content, the entire backlog of I'll Suck Your Blood episodes, improvised horror movies, the ability to pick a movie for us to discuss, vlogs, behind the scene content, Jed's on the vlog, and much more. The found footage movie that me and Jed made recently is going to come out on Patreon soon. It's um, pretty good. And open, It's really good. And the movie Open Mouth, starring Jed. Open Mouth. You named it. <laughs> you named it. <laughs> I named it. You did. Uh, that's all on Patreon.com slash Horse Soup. And thank you to the Patreon donators for picking this movie. Uh, the best way to keep up with everything Horse Soup is to, well, I'm watching movies and supplying full commentary and penis jokes on Twitch.tv slash Horse Soup. Me and Jed actually twitched this one we twitched it we did this episode live mm. so sometimes you'll oh, find full episodes that's what that is that, right there yeah, that's what all those things are yeah there. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we did this live sometimes i do like uh, i watch movies and do commentaries live sometimes just hang out talk about other things the streams have been really fun and we've been watching stuff like thanks killing silent night deadly night 2 peter rotten tail and a bunch of like non-sploitation movies thanks to my buddy marissa so follow the instagram on horror soup follow the twitter horror soup sucks Movie reviews, horror soup, Caleb on Letterboxd. Any inquiries to horrorsoupyahoo.com. And Jed, do you want to plug anything? No. Jed doesn't want to plug anything. And uh, yeah, TikTok at Horror Soup. And thanks to the Mute Members Only Club and to Robbie Lee for being the intro and outro of this whole thing. Thanks, baby. And, uh, I yeah. love you. You love them? Mm-hmm. That's good. Do you want to say, say bye to them? Bye. 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 All right. End it. Bye. 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 End it. Is it over? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.